you're ready. Ready. Okay, Doc. Okay. Heads. Heads. So we love a bat. Okay. Uh, how does this normally play? Well, you don't you don't play much cricket on this uh, on this ground, but I, I I don't know actually how it's going to play. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So you think it might turn a bit though? It looks a bit that way, yeah, doesn't it? It looks a bit it might turn. Uh, it might grip as well. I don't think it's going to be a wicket where the ball's going to come onto the back. You can see if you put your spikes in, the surface comes off. So it, it might stop a bit and it even help the seamers also, you know, because if they hit the lane, it might stop. Decided to bring uh, Yuvraj in. Uh, what's the reasoning there? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a very good player. He's done well against Australia. He'd been out of form uh, for a couple of games. So the selectors decided to rest him so that he could get tougher and come back. And we've always had tremendous ability, uh, tremendous uh, confidence in his ability. And he's a plus on the field. Right. So and your batting order? You, uh, you opening the batting? Yeah, yeah I'm still yeah. opening, yeah. Okay, good luck then. Thanks. Steve, uh, what do you make of this pitch? Uh, well, I probably could do it with a bit more wrong. He looks pretty soft and uh, it'll break up. No doubt it'll take turn. It's, uh, I think it'll be hard for batting. Yeah. What about the humidity? How are the guys coping with that? Oh, pretty good, mate. It hasn't been too bad, actually. We've had tours here. It's been a lot hotter, so it's uh, actually been quite pleasant. Yeah. And uh, Damien Fleming left out for this game. Uh, he's been in pretty good bowling form, hasn't he? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's always hard to know what sort of uh, makeup to go in with a, this sort of wicket. But it uh, looks like I think the sort of spinners and part-time bowlers could be handy. The slower you bowl here, I think it'll be the better. All right. Good luck, then. Thanks. All right. Well, we had a great decider in the Test Series, and hopefully we'll have a tremendous decider here in Goa. Saurabh Ganguly has won the toss, and India will bat first. Strong Indian side, they made just one change, and that was Yurav Singh, who played so well in Nairobi in the ICC knockout trophy, but has been out of form since. He comes in to replace Robin Singh. Ganguly, will he open again? Plenty of discussion that he should. Sachin Tendulkar, what great form he is in, as is VVS Laxman and Rahul Dravid. Then the youngster Badani, who looks a good player as well, down to the bowler. So India, pretty strong and desperate to win this match here at Go. For Australia... Matthew Hayden and Adam Gilchrist. What an explosive opening pair they are. Ponting, 100 in the last match, but still generally out of form. Michael Bevan, one of the world's great one-day players. Steve Waugh, and then strong batting with Lehman, Simons and Harvey before the bowlers. So Australia in very good form there with their players. Let's go to the first ball of the match now. The fifth and final match. The winner wins the tournament. It's Glenn McGrath bowling to Sordo Ganguly. Here comes McGrath for the decider in what's been a great series between these two teams. In the air and just wide of second set goes to the boundary. First ball and Ganguly is off the mark. McGrath got the edge. Ganguly got the fence. A wry smile by Glenn McGrath. Good line again. Man out of form. Just a shade outside the off stump. Opening the face with the bat. With two slips in position. A risky shot to play. But that's what he needed. Four runs on the board, he loves to score in boundaries. He's got off the mark. Our oh, atmosphere is sensational. Just two men on the leg side. A man at uh, widest mid on, that's Lehman. And down at fine leg. Tony Greg made the point that he thought the rotation system had gone out the window. Well, I would have thought the rotation system is in. Because Australia has made three changes today. Out is Damien Martin, Shane Lee and Damien Fleming. And in Darren Lehman, Andrew Simons and Ian Harvey. And just the one change in the Indian team. Robinson goes out to make way for Yuvraj Singh. Around the wicket, McGrath. Nice and solid, Ganguly. So all Ganguly really has to do, he's got a man at the other end who is in scintillating form in Sachin Tendulkar. Not only scintillating form, but great run scoring form as well at such a wonderful rate. But all Ganguly has to do is play his own game. Very much like Ponting did in the last match in Vizac with Matthew Hayden. Ponting terribly out of form, like Ganguly. And he made 100 simply because he just played and allowed the other man to do all the scoring. That's all Ganguly has to do. Let Tendulka do the work. He's looking good out there, Ganguly. A good, positive front foot defensive shot. He's an exceptional one-day player who's had some tour scores in the series. 6-4-0-9. But here's a big opportunity. He's got runs in the finals of tournaments. And what a setting it is to come back into form. Full house. And Ganguly again. The ball really hitting the bat. So Ganguly... 
already looking a little bit better than he has in the previous series. McGrath, been Australia's premier bowler for a long time. Been a very good wicket-taking bowler in this series. Sometimes on these grounds, small, fast grounds, the number of runs conceded belies how well a person bowls. So McGrath, he's taken a bit of stick from Tendulkar. Tendulkar really has targeted the Australian fast bowler. But to all the other batsmen, he's bowled particularly well. So Ganguly survives the first over. It was a boundary off the first ball. It's four without loss. Bracken. So Tenduka is one of the keys. What a player he is, and what a player he has been in this series, Sachin Tenduka. Opening the batting, giving himself a target of batting for at least the first 40 overs, and then perhaps playing some shots. I think he's being very modest to suggest that he's waiting 40 overs before he plays a few shots. We've seen some magnificent batting from Tenduka. Strike rate of 122 in this series. And that's why a regulation half volley and Tendulka just caresses it to the cover fence. It's got them on their feet. The placement here is excellent. The ball was right up there to be driven. But a very strong offside field and that very narrow gap between short extra cover and covers. And he found that gap to perfection. McGrath, bowling his second over, bowling to Tendulkar. Quite a conventional field now, just a slip, the man at short cover. And an offside field that's pretty strong, but you don't want to bowl Tendulkar anything that resembles a half volley. So the pitch had a bit of moisture in the surface this morning, and it's quite a moving pitch. Nice bowling. So just a little bit of give in the pitch. There was a game of football or soccer for the Australian supporters. Played here just three weeks ago. It's a wonderful surface. And the pitch just having a little bit of movement in it, which suggests that it may break up this afternoon. So that's why Ginguli has decided to bat first. This is the Nehru Stadium in Fatorda, the area of Margao in Goa. Excellent outfield. Half volley. You can't bowl half volleys to Tendulkar. Nathan Mack Bracken tried it. So Glenn McGrath thought I'd do it as well. Yes, this pitch has a tendency of getting the ball to stop a little bit. It was pitched right up there for Tendulkar. Not exactly a half volley, but pitch quite full. Just holding on Tendulkar. One of the reasons that the ball was in the air for a while, you can see that adjustment that Tendulkar had to make because of the lack of pace from the pitch. Bracken back into the attack, bowling to Tendulkar. Nanguli at the other end has had a very poor series and his mode of dismissals probably suggests that. Just slashing it into the hands of short cover. Dragging on with no footwork. Then trying to go the other way and smash his way into form. That didn't work. And again, short cover. So very soft dismissals by the Indian captain. And yet today he looks a lot more solid. First ball got the outside edge, went to the boundary. But today, from that moment, he's been very solid. His footwork's been good. He's gone forward to the balls up. And that's the first ball of the match. And did that get the crowd in a frenzy? Just watching those dismissals, it's quite interesting to see a man's strong point turning out to be a weakness. Such a strong player on the offside, but every dismissal that we saw was while he was playing on the offside. Uh, leg side. His placement on the leg side is exquisite, Jinduka. And he may get a boundary, he does. No, McGrath might have done well, or was he over the fence? Well, the umpire won't know. McGrath hasn't helped him out with the signal. Tendulkar is looking at McGrath. Now, hopefully McGrath 
knows what he's done. Very close to the little boundary fence. So did he stop it? Looks pretty good there, McGrath did very well. The umpire is just waiting for a confirmation. It was pretty close. Did that foot touch the boundary line when he touched the ball? The dragging of the ball is quite clean. You can see the fingers coming down there, but the foot, while it does that, has it touched the rope. It's not really a rope this time. Just the boundary. Just two run signals, so McGrath did well. Tendulkar's been looking at the bottom of his bat now for a couple of matches. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the rest of the bat. But he has been uh, giving the toe of the bat a fair looking over. In the air, and Australia's got the first breakthrough, and what a breakthrough. Nathan Bracken into the side for Damien Fleming, and what a wicket for the Australians, and this sellout crowd has stopped. As always, a stunned silence when this happens. Short of leg delivery angle away from the right hander, trying to play on the up, getting a thick edge, and a good catch by the wicket keeper. Well, Gangulich got it through the men on the offside. Lovely shot up on his toes. Steve Waugh has that field set for Gangulich's square of the wicket shot, but he's been able to get it through the gap. This might be a very good sign for the Indian captain. He might be just finding some of that form. Absolutely, Hooksy, and uh, this shot will give him a lot of confidence. A strong offside feel, and in spite of that, a shot played without any risk and piercing that gap between those two fielders. Oh, and uh, pretty close. And Steve Waugh was the man closing in there from that cover position. And this was touch and go. Nanguli wanted the single. He was uh, quick to call Lakshman. And uh, that was the problem Steve Waugh had. He picked the ball up with the left hand and then had to transfer it to the right. That gave Ganguly that extra second. Well fielded. Nicely timed. Well fielded. It's 27 for one. Watchfully played away on the offside again. They've got to be a bit careful of this running between the wickets too. They'll uh, be looking to jump on every opportunity. Have a look at this. They come in almost as if uh, they're stalking and then the ball's played away and uh, in goes one of the fields from their little flick at the stumps out of steve war it was just wide of the stumps oh that's uh, uppishly flicked away no gully there well if you've got no gully and it's flicked away in the air then um you don't deserve the wicket i suppose better to say he does uh, tend to open the face a little bit be very interesting to see um, how Harvey goes here yeah, because he does have a very good change of pace so Bracken has uh, done very well he's completed five overs he went for five in the first one two runs in the second and gone Tendulkar out only a single off his third then he bowled a maiden and then only one run in his fifth so you can't ask for more than that oh good shot beautifully played that is the most sensational drive to play a cover drive like that all the way along the ground on a slow pitch is really, really tremendous talent. Have another look at this shot. Now this shot from Lakshman exudes class. Fantastic timing. And this is the shot of the morning so far. What's the balance here? Leading into it, nice still head. And not trying to hit it too hard. It's not an easy surface to really get the timing right. You've got to stay in there for a while. That's superb stuff. Saxon would have been proud of that one, I've got to tell you. So would Don Bradman. 
in the air, down to third man. This will be cut off. Oh, yes, well fielded down to third man. Harvey coming across there. That looked as if it was going to be four. Yes, good effort in the deep from Ian Harvey. That ball was travelling quickly. Down the wicket he goes, over the top goes Ganguly. He started to turn it on into the fence for four. Sort of Ganguly is back. Now this is a predetermined shot. He's decided to put pressure on the bowler with the very first delivery of the over. And he's chipped down the track, he's given himself room. The good thing there that his head was down and still when he played it. played again lovely late cut more confidence there from Ganguly well Robbie I don't know if you noticed but uh, he's taken a leaf I think out of uh, Steve Waugh's uh, book or should we say a hanky but he's got a little red handkerchief sticking out of his right pocket there yes could be the good luck charm and there's been a lot made about uh, Ganguly and how the Australians have got under his skin I just get the feeling that uh, it's the other way around He's got under the skin of the Australians more than anything else. Yes, he's not got runs. Uh, you know, his attitude has been a problem, uh, as reported in the media. I guess people have overreacted at times. Great shot from Laxman. All good fielding to the Australians are throwing themselves at everything. I think Warren got a hand on that one. That slowed it down enough. And then Bevan at mid on, scampering around at the rest. Again, the timing so good. He's such a good onside player, VVS Lakshman. Very risky when he plays in that area. Ah! Yes, there's no doubt that it's going to be slow. So, um, what sometimes happens is that the bowler bowls it a bit faster. That's uh, that's what the bowler can do to counteract this. Let's have a look at this one. Hits him outside the off stump and going straight on. So, uh, no chance of an LBW there. Oh, he's hit that one down to mid-wicket. They're going to get after Warren. They're going to go for him. That's four. Right across the line with the spin sure. But there's no way they're going to let Warren settle in here. Yes, especially when he doesn't have a deep mid-wicket. He's bowling inside the first 15 overs, so the fielding restrictions apply. Ganguly is going to take his chances. And he's picked a spot here. There's no one in the deep, so all he wants to do is really clear that fielder at mid-wicket. Oh, he's hit that one down a square leg. Ganguly is off to Warren. He got a bit of, he had a bit of luck in the side. I think it was a second ball, but those were two good shots. Well, the crowd coming to life here, and once again, a very good shot from Saurav Ganguly. This is the first one, didn't quite time it, but no problems with the second one. There's no one at deep mid-wicket, no one at deep backward square leg. This is a good safe hit. And as a result of those two boundaries now, a man is dropping back into the deep. But good cricket here by the Indian captain. India 64 for one at uh, drinks. The captain uh, fighting really hard in this knock, trying to produce a decent total for India. And I think that target today is going to be set much lower than in previous matches. The man at long on, but it's going to go way over his head. This is the Ganguly of old. On a not so good batting pitch, effortlessly lofting the leg spinner for a big six. Then picks up a single. Ganguly looking good and now beginning to look dangerous. 
partnership uh, worth 50 now 55 it is exactly bottom hand into it with the spin got the elevation into the crowd well, that's the way to bring up a 50 partnership it's a good shot because it was the skidding delivery that goes straight on Ponting has hit them. They should get an extra run here. Ponting has still got his hands in the air. But the umpire not keen on going for the third umpire. There were actually two men looking to cover that throw. But because it hit the stumps, this went into the direction where there wasn't any fielder. The batsman had made ground comfortably. Not good cricket by Ponting. He's beaten mid on, and that'll be away to the boundary. Picked the slow ball pretty well on that occasion. Well, he got it at last. He was looking to play a big shot in that area, especially behind the bowler and that area behind mid on. The slow ball just helped matters. Picked on the full. India not really middling it, but the intentions were pretty clear. And now the mid-on has dropped back. It's a man at deep point. They're pushing for two. Very good throw from Lehman. But Ganguly grounding the bat. Well, he's on 49. But he raised his bat, uh, thinking that it's got his 50. So maybe the scoreboard on the ground, suggesting that Ganguly's got his 50. Bat raised. And looks heavenwards. from Warren. Well, not many of the people uh, down our end of the ground would know what's on the scoreboard because they can't see it. The scoreboard is saying that uh, Ganguly is on 50. We uh, tend to disagree with the official scorers. And they've got uh, Laxman 19. We've got Laxman 20. I'll back uh, our statistician Max Kruger any day of the week. Straight and well hit. Well, it took a while coming, but it's come at last for Ganguly. He's 50 for sure now. And what a hit this one is. Again, the ball pushed through. And he got underneath so well. Another one for Ganguly. Might not go all the way. Bracken uh, giving a chase, it does. So a six followed by a boundary and Shane Warne is struggling out there a good clean hit straight down the pitch the ball that was pushed through in the air oh that was good to watch straight onto the hoarding it got stuck there on the eye and prompted the bowler to pitch that one a bit too wide ah! chance here for ah! and the umpire is asking for a replay it should favour the batsman because uh, Gilchrist had to pick up the ball and uh, whip the bails off. Generally, the batsman covers a bit of territory while that's happening. Subroto Porel is the umpire. It's called for the TV replay. Ball collected pretty low. And as you chapter said, because he had to collect it and then drag it onto the stumps, it's always the batsman who gains the advantage. Quite the case here as well. So Ganguly survives. As we'll see the green light on there, it is 97 for one. Oh, and no ball called. 
He certainly nicked it. And uh, it certainly went to glove. But no ball was called. Well, I thought I heard no ball called. Yes, he's come up there, obviously signalled very quickly. So there's the front foot going over the line, according to the umpire. And then a bit of bounce at the other end. May have got the glove, in fact. The glove of Ganguly and the glove of Gilchrist. that one into the gap nicely that's the sort of shot he's been playing control not trying to hit it too hard doesn't mind uh, accepting the single yes uh, this is that um, no ball again They're flying away it certainly uh, bounced a little more than we've seen so far straight down the ground beautiful shot magnificent straight drive well it was a little bit uppish, but it was struck so sweetly. I think it had to become uppish to get around towards the mid-on area. It was on off stump just outside, so pretty hard to get that ball along the ground. But he knows the mid-on was wide. Lovely strike of the ball. Easy hit. And now mid-on has gone out onto the fence. He's hit that one square on the leg side. That's going to go for four as well. Well, he's, uh, he's certainly taken a few chances today, but that's the way he plays. Steve Orr said at the toss that he thought the part-time bowlers would be uh, suited for this sort of pitch. Well, they've run into Ganguly, a player they wouldn't have expected to run into today. He's probably taking just a fraction more risks than he needs to, but at the moment, he's getting away with it and hitting important boundaries. Oh, gently little uh, nudge away down to third man. Yes, I suppose what he's really got to be careful of is throwing his wicket away here now because if he continues like this, then uh, they're going to get themselves a really good... Oh, inside edge for four. It's gone off the inside edge for four. Well, if you bowl around the wicket, Glenn McGraw looking up towards the heavens, uh, looking as if he's pleading for help. But if you're around the wicket, the angle is going to take it in that direction. Hindus have 3,000 gods. I'm not sure which one he is appealing to there, Glenn McGrath. Just a little bit slack in his footwork there, Gengel. He maybe is a lot more weary than what we think. Maybe he's a little bit tired and distressed. It's very hot, very humid. Oh, it's in the air. This is going to be out. He's got him. He's got him. And Ganguly asking the question as to whether it should be a no ball. The square leg umpire says that's out. Ganguly actually turned around. Now then, the umpire is saying, off you go. You've been given out by the square leg umpire. So uh, Ganguly there, surprised by that short ball from Tendulkar. The question really is, was it over his shoulder in his normal standing position? And I think that it was probably around about, well, about shoulder height. Let's see. He's in your standing position, and he's probably got a fair case to argue, Ganguly. He's certainly off the ground. Now, he was off the ground with his knees slightly bent. Not an easy one for the umpire to decide. But oh, so it's 121 for two. Ganguly has been given out in controversial circumstances. Dravid is the new batsman, and he's on strike now. Glenn McGraw has made the breakthrough. Oh, what a good shot from Dravid. What a way to get off the mark. He has blitzed that through the onside field for four. Now it's the vice-captain who means business. Right, oh, well, let's just go back to this wicket. I want to use the telestrator here. Basically... What Ganguly was saying is that that one was above shoulder height in standing position. Now watch this. The ball is on its way up, don't forget. There it is. You can see it's moving upwards. And uh, as we roll this on, you'll see how it's it, it going upwards, upwards, climbing, just beginning to level out. But it's hit him there. The ball really is going through there. Right, so there it is. The ball going through there. There is shoulder height, and so the way I see it, and his feet don't forget here are off the ground, so really this here is out, but that up there is not out.
So basically, Gunguli, I think David has a case. Yes, he has. Whether you should remonstrate with the umpire on the ground is a different argument, but certainly under the strict letter of the law, you would say that he was not out. Oh, beautifully played away on the onside. Now it's Laxman. That's four. That's wonderful timing. VVS Laxman whipping that one away on the onside for four. Well, I think you'll probably find now that he is going to take over where Gunguli left off. It's such a difficult shot, the on-drive through mid-wicket. We've seen two classic examples in the last two or three deliveries. First of all, driver to get off the mark was a beauty, and Laxman has matched it. And the law, quite simply for the Ganguly dismissal, says that if a ball passes or would have passed above the shoulder height of the striker standing upright at the crease, either umpire shall call and signal no ball. So certainly would have gone above his shoulder if he'd been standing still in that position there he is now, you would have thought. Yes, the umpires uh, have got it wrong, I'm afraid. The Ganguly was definitely not out. So this is just a slightly different angle on it. There we are. You can see it's way over his head. In fact, probably would have hit him uh, in the face, and he was actually about two inches off, perhaps even three inches off the ground. And there it is, and up she goes. And, uh, of course, he did pause there, looked at the umpire, but the umpire said, keep going. But Ganguly asked both umpires, well, where did the pitch, where was it going? But he accepted the umpire's decision there, nothing wrong with that, he had just asked the question. You could argue whether he should even ask, but once he asked it, he was quite happy to nod and walk from the field. Oh, he smashed that square for four. Don't bowl short to VBS Laxman. He'll rip you to pieces. Magnificent shot onto his back foot, even at time to watch it on the middle of the bat. Gee, you can bowl short of Laxman if you're Brett Lee, but if you're bowling lollipops, then you are giving the man in great form just a free boundary. That's at 50 for BBS Laxman. Vivius Laxman has shown the same sort of consistency as Matthew Hayden has for Australia. And he's really uh, been an important man in this Indian team. Well, as we said earlier, good partnership for India, although this fall is there in the scoring rate but because this pitch is not uh, easy for a new batsman to come and straight away dominate proceedings what it will allow the Indians is the comfort of a few wickets in hand when they go into the last stage of the match what a shot he's hit that in the middle of the bat one bounce for four magnificently played don't bowl short to VVS Laxman there is only one result he's looking to push through Darren Lehman, his left arm spinners, fell short on that occasion, but the placement was excellent. There was that man in the deep to be beaten, and he did that well. Played it square of the wicket, and in doing so, he found that gap between dip wicket and long on. That's for great effort by the fielder. But the timing of Lutchman, the winner, 188 for two. Oh, what a shot! What a magnificent shot! Through the covers for four, using his feet down the wicket to Shane Warne, smashes it through the covers. VBS Lutchman now has 80.
Well, all those people out there in the stands saw this happening in Kolkata in that test match. Now they're getting to see it live. BVS Lakshman in full flow. Stepping out, driving through that very narrow gap between the two fielders. Along the ground all the time and great timing behind that one. Oh, there he goes again. Midwicket, another four. Into the boundary. Well, he is playing superbly. What a tragedy these guys aren't going to Saja. What a tragedy. The only people to be happy about that is the whole of Pakistan. They are playing great cricket. Whipped away on the onside again. The run rate is up to 2.59. Sorry, 5.29. This is the delivery they're uh, carrying on about. It's fired uh, down the leg side and uh, just flicked the pad. He made them re-bowl it. Short delivery, pulled away. Four more. Boy, what a place to be. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Goa has come alive. Oh, well played. Short delivery, stands up and says, please hit me. And, uh, well, when that happens to Laxman, invariably he does. A lovely shot. Been an amazing boundary flow for VVS Laxman. His sixth boundary in such a short time. He had five of 11 deliveries. Laxman on 96, Drava 31. The partnership 97 of 95 balls. Oh, he's hit that one straight to mid-wicket. That's the end of Dravid. Whacking it away. I think he had to go, really. Trying to get it over the top and nicely taken at mid-wicket. So, Dravid putting the team first. Going for the boundaries. This is how it happened. Dravid was steady until this. Trying to hit a bit too hard. Head falling back. And in the end, scooped a simple catch to see war. But a good hand by Dravid. One for 31 and India 218 for three. Oh, he's missed it. It's gone straight through Steve Wall. Back for two, that's 98. Well, he's done it again, Steve Wall. <laughs> Almost every match. It's a side that you're getting accustomed to. A ball going through Steve Wall. Mind you, an extraordinary fielder, good catcher. But this is something the Australians also joke about, where the ball completely beats Steve Waugh, goes through everything for runs. Couple on that occasion. Down the ground, he'll get one, that's 99. Boy, if I had him, I'd have been charging down that pitch. Just in case there's a fumble, who knows? He settled for one, I think he's getting pretty tired. That's it. That's his century. Steered away through the offside. VVS Laxman has played a magnificent innings here in Goa. He's scored his first one-day international century. A century that will be remembered in this neck of the woods for a long, long time. The first hundred that we've seen at the Nehru Stadium here in Patolda. And VVS Lakshan has already made a huge impact in the test matches for India, making his first mark in one-day cricket. Well, that's uh, a rather lucky one for Badani, but he'll take it. You can do that when you've got plenty of wickets in hand, and that's what India have at the moment. Ian Harvey's not too pleased, but just flay the bat at the ball, no chance of getting caught behind. And then it's just a matter whether the third man can get around on this occasion, Darren Lehman. Back into the side after a slight hamstring strain. Means that he couldn't make it. Here's a chance for Gilchrist. Batson of cross. And Gilchrist takes the catch. So a century for VVS Laxman. His first one in one day internationals. And it's been a magnificent innings. Yes, and he'll get, uh, quite rightly, a standing ovation from this huge crowd here in Goa. Just trying to slog it, in effect, really. Just slicing it up. Easy catch for Adam Gilchrist. 
So Laxman goes from the ground, a very weary man, you would suggest, just indicating how tiring it is out there. For 101, it's 230 for four. Yuvraj seeing the new batsman. The players did cross, so it'll be Badani on strike. And he's been bowled. So a double breakthrough there for Ian Harvey. First of all, he got uh, VVS Laxman. And now he's got Badani. Well, Australia are back in this game in just a space of two deliveries, how it can change. So the second last ball of Harvey's ninth over presented him with a wicket of VVS Laxman. Then next ball, the batsman did cross, Badani on seven, just missed the full toss. So Australia now, we've got new men at the crease, and they will have for the next six overs. So good news for Australia, it's 2.30 for five. Good athlete, Harvey, and also probably plays a bit of Australian rules as a youngster. Well, both batsman and bowler were trying to find their space there. Harvey acknowledged uh, in the end he was sorry, but you're seen doing a very good job just staying between the ball and the stumps with his body. Harvey could only run through him or try and pick the ball up. So Singh goes straight back. Excellent. Harvey acknowledges that he's sorry. Nathan Bracken has been very good the last two games. Got Tendulkar out both matches. Left arm over the wicket. Well, in Pune, when uh, Australia chased successfully, India lost their way in the last few overs, and it would appear that uh, the same thing is happening here. Darren Lehman asked the bowl. It's really uh, struggling to come to grips with these the variations that Ian Harvey's coming up with. at long off Shane Warne got his hands to it but couldn't hang on to it made a lot of ground actually did very well to get there yes there's no thought in Shane Warne's mind who let a bounce and saved the single save the extra run he was after the catch very good job to get where he got funny old shot Warne running a long way just had it and then just lost it but just losing is enough. Oh. Well, difficult stumping chance, but uh, nevertheless, an opportunity. Pass the ball from Simons. And when it's full like that, it just hits the pads and then went off onto the stumps. Oh. Well, this time... Uh, the umpire has called for the videotape replay. Looked to me like that previous one, uh, the batsman just got his bat down in time after the ball bounced back off the stumps. This is the previous delivery, the one that the umpire has called for. Well, no problems there. Foot behind the line, even though it's quite dusty and dirty. A clay-type surface here in Goa. Good work from Gilchrist following the previous delivery. Well, Batsman really having their problems with Andrew Simons. Three men out on the onside, covering the uh, boundary. Simon's last three overs have gone for one, five, and just two off this over so far. This is the one that nobody appealed for. Bat in the air and bails off and no appeal. Don't tell me the Australians have finished the tour off on a good sportsmanship note. 
Goodrides really has lost the plot here. He's uh, he's missed more than he's hit. And the worst thing that can happen now is that he gets frustrated and decides to try and have a big whoosh at the ball. Still five wickets in the shed. Just needs to get that on ball and get himself a couple of runs unless he hits it directly to a fieldsman. Well, that's a handy one. It's going to race away to the boundary. A tough situation for a captain as to where he places his third man. On slower pitches, traditionally you have these third man a lot square, but I just feel that with the left arm over the wicket, fast bowler, to a man who's not hitting the ball in the middle of the bat, then perhaps the third man could be a lot finer. He's not going to play a cut shot, unless Bracken bowls in short delivery, which he's not trying to. So maybe he just needs a little, bit, a little bit finer. This time he's got it near the middle of the bat. That's more like the Yubrad Singh we saw in Kenya. Had a wonderful tour in Kenya last October. Been out of sorts since then. And the first few balls that he faced showed why, but this one's a pretty nice clean hit. Shane Warne only having to run about 15 metres and couldn't get there. This time Dahi has got it in the middle of the bat and he's found the gap. Crowd loving this boundary spree. Just trying to hit it nice and square on this occasion, not trying to hit it to mid wicket. Nice shot, one bounce over. Dangerous start to the over for Australia. Lehman is at long off. Lovely sweep shot in the air. Struck well, but Andrew Simon's in the way. One of the world's best fieldsmen, Andrew Simons. And no danger for him at letting it go past himself. So just three balls remaining. And I guess psychologically at least, India would like to get another eight runs off the three balls. 26 fours and two sixes for India. Ganguly hitting both the sixes. Nathan, oh, here's a run out. The easiest run out of all time. Yuvraj Singh had stopped and was actually going to go back to him, make his ground, and suddenly he took off again and fell over. Finished up getting on his heels, and that's why he slipped. And when he slipped, he just conceded because Nathan Bracken took off, then realised that there was no contest. So batsman looking for a bye. Gilchrist doing the right thing, throwing it. Unfortunately for Gilchrist, he missed the stumps. Bracken looks around and sees that the man's having a pitch that many thought would only see around about 210 to 220 runs. Did pretty well to finish at 6 for 265 off their allocated 50 overs, although a little bit lazy in the last 10 overs, adding just 48. But VVS Laxman, his first one-day international 100, and boy, was he tired at the end of it. Very hot and humid conditions. He got himself 101. Ganguly finally back into some form with 74, but the big wicket. Nathan Bracken, consecutive matches, he got the champion out. Sachin Tendulkar caught behind, slashing at a wide one for just 12. And Badani and Singh did a little bit of damage towards the end. For Australia, well, it was Glenn McGrath and Nathan Bracken who opened. Bracken, again, showed what wonderful promise he has. Ten overs, one for 37. Ian Harvey, a couple of wickets. Andrew Simons, eight overs, one for 40. A good comeback after an early pasting. So Australia needs 266 of 50 overs to win at a run rate of 5.32 runs per over. Let's go to the first ball of Australia's innings. It's the Avergal Srinath to the man in form, Matthew Hayden. I must say I'm a little surprised to see Gilchrist out there, but he, uh, he bounded out of the dressing room, doing a little jig to get uh, loosened up. So obviously he feels well enough to uh, open the batting. And that's good news for Australia. I'm sure they wouldn't want to change the batting order too much. But having seen uh, BBS Laxman 
a very weary man after his innings. It is extremely humid. Almost a perfect start there for India. Matthew Hayden really going after that one. We saw the first ball this morning to Ganguly, which was edge to four. Very close to doing that was Matthew Hayden. Exactly the fashion Adam Gilchrist was dis uh, dislodged in the last innings. Just a little bit of movement. Uh, we saw some of the Australian bowlers swing the ball early on. Ian Harvey got it to swing a bit. Glenn McGrath also. India posting a very good target, 265. BVS Laxman with his first one-day international 100. And Ganguly with a welcome return to form. Wasn't easy out there for the bowlers. But Nathan Bracken did a good job, got rid of uh, Sachin Tendulkar. And also uh, Ian Harvey finished well with a couple of wickets. And Andrew Simons took a pounding bowling his medium paces, but uh, significantly he came back later in the innings bowling his off spin and really troubled the, the lower order players, turning the ball quite a lot. Excellent shot from Hayden. Not long before he's middling the ball once again. He's a powerful driver of the cricket ball, Matthew Hayden. Again, the line was very consistent outside the off stump. Not too wide. Just a little fuller than his earlier deliveries, which was enough for a man in form to hit. Good front foot forward. Edged. And just short of BBS Laxman at first slip. This is good cricket by India. Again, the line was good just outside the off stump. They're looking to pick up wickets early. It's not really all about containment out there. So Gilchrist just edging that one. Falling well short of BBS Laxman. Ball hitting the soil, just deviating ever so slightly. Not too short, but just short of that first slip fielder, BBS Lakshman. Oh, inside edge, there's no one down there, so you don't need to even waste any energy running for that. Very fortunate that missed the stumps. It's getting some sideways movements there. You can't. Here's the first one that fell short of BBS Lakshman. Again, the ball leaving the left hander ever so slightly, and on the second occasion, the ball immediately following that one came in. And fortunate Gilchrist that uh, he didn't play that one onto his thumbs. So often that can happen. But four runs. Worth a shout. A turn down by umpire Gomez. Well, that's a magnificent shot. Wasn't that short? It's got an eye like a dead fish. Well, there was something he had to do, Gilchrist. The Indians were consistent with the line and length, and a good field also set for that kind of line. So just to get the bats, the bowler unsettled, taking a bit of a risk, and relying, as Ian Chappell pointed out, on a good eye. That's a good, good shot there. Matthew Hayden. The good comeback delivery by Shreena. He's stuck to the same line. The stock line that he has looked to ball just outside the off stump. The shot previous to this ball was with the intention of unsettling Shreena. Nothing of that sort. The comeback delivery, good line. Yeah! 
another inside edge misses leg stump no luck for the opening bowlers uh, in this spell could be the pace on the pitch which is not fast that's getting the Australian batsman to play maybe a little too early and playing a little wide is purely because the line has been wide outside the off stump so anything that do doesn't really angle away the Indian bowlers have a chance a couple of occasions the Australian batsmen have been lucky but good bowling here by Srinath no chance for the wicketkeeper good shot no one down there there's a man at deep backward square but not at fine leg just a bit too close to the batsman and short in length but that was really an easy pick for Matthew Hayden just too close to the kind of feel that he has Oh, what a good shot that is. Way back uh, over the ball boy's head. Beautifully hit. That's the thousand runs on the tour for Matthew Hayden. And the runs came in grand style for Matthew Hayden. Four boundaries and a six. It was a tremendous shot. Played ever so casually and to a fast bowler. Just went through the line, Matthew Hayden. What a great shot that is. Got a very still head that really is a feature of his batting especially when playing those pull shots and the lofted shots a very still head that's well run ganguly and he's hit them but uh, hayden's well home see any of the Indian fielders appealing for that one but the umpire has gone for a TV replay comfortably made that's four more so the runs coming pretty uh, easily at the moment for the Australians in the commentary position now Ravi Shastri with Tony Gregg yes thanks you and that's uh, that's certainly money for jam out there Matthew Hayden bowled short outside off stump. Boy, does he love the cut shot. And this is an example of it. Yes, he's not had much of the strike in this innings. It's been uh, dominated by Hayden. 32 balls as against uh, the 11 that has been played by Adam Gilchrist. In the air and another fall. Another short delivery. This is not very good bowling by India. They've done their stuff with the bat, but at the moment, the bowlers are letting the team down. Well, that's nicely struck down the ground again. Back for the second. Yes, you could see Saurav Ganguly shaking his head at the end of the last over. The field that has been set here for Adam Gilchrist is uh, wanting him to play off the front foot, and he's lethal on anything that's short. He already cut Zahir Khan earlier in the over, and then the pull shot. And Zahir Khan is bowling to Gilchrist as a man at short extra cover. So the captain's plans are pretty obvious. He wants him to play forward, drive through the offside. And he's not a happy man. That's um, where Nathan Bracken was very good for the Australians today. A lot of uh, very experienced bowlers around him, but he was the one who stuck to the basics. Bowled a good length and a good line, and um, as a result, oh, there's another short ball. It's disappeared. Well, I think it was uh, one bounce for four, but uh, surely 
the Indians must realize that this is not the way to go to these two. Well, it just shows you the kind of form Matthew Hayden is in. He's just dismissed this delivery from his presence. Just short of a length from Srinath, but he's on to it in a flash. In fact, hitting it off the front foot. Just heaving it over mid-wicket. And it almost went all the way. Dismissive stroke. Oh, and that was close to the outside edge. He's also a little bit deceptive, sometimes a little quicker than he looks. It's good line and a very good length here to Adam Gilchrist. You've already mentioned he's such a good player of the back foot. He likes to cut and pull. Now the length wasn't quite right there to play that cut shot. the top and what a good shot it's oh it's into the fence just short or just over uh, it looked as if it went all the way well what timing that is i tell you what at the moment if they get if they receive a dot ball that's the next one's got to go this was a beautiful shot yes the australians realize the importance of these early overs and they're putting the pressure on all the bowlers this is agarkar's first over Good use of his feet and he didn't give the charge early it was good with the timing of stepping down the track in the air into the gap and another four the fours are coming thick and fast well he's looking to angle the ball across the left hander here Agarkar. it just gives the batsman a little extra room on this occasion and uh, Kilchrist went after this but this was the six that he hit earlier Lovely charge down the track, and then he slapped this one over point. There's no one in the deep, so Agarkar might just be thinking of coming round the wicket at some stage to the left-handers, try and tuck them up. Well, they've raced to 64 without loss. This is uh, the 10th over now. And another one into the gap on the offside. That wasn't there to drive, really. It was almost a flat back. Oh, it looked as if he was going to cut the ball and uh, just kept going. As they've taken the view that in the first 15, it's uh, going to be me or him. Again, the width offered. It allows Gilchrist to free his arms and uh, punish the bowler through the offside. Once again, the placement good. You had to reach out here, Gilchrist. But he's done well. In the air, got him, oh yes, well taken, one-handed. Woohoo! At last, Laxman. Correction, it's gone really with Laxman's shirt on. I tell you what, it surprised him. It went like a rocket at him. He put his hands up and hit his right hand. That's the, uh, the wrong hand for him. It actually hit the middle of the hand. Boy, what an important catch that was. In the end, a tremendous catch. This not easy to take. This has come out flat at him. The crowd in the background, and he's plucked it out of thin air with that right hand. And what a wicket for India. Against the run of play, Hayden's gone. The Indian captain has taken a great catch. Australia 70 for one. Your Christ on 34. Ponting is the new batsman. Coming out to a ground now that has come alive. They were starting to feel a little depressed, I think. Uh, Hayden was going wonderfully well. And uh, he blazed when away at mid-on. And uh, the captain of India, who's having a wonderful game, made 74 and uh, managed to latch onto this catch. I've got to tell you, it was going like a rocket. Righto, Ponting. I think Saurav Ganguly will be most relieved that he got that right hand out just in time. It's never easy to sight balls that come at you this hard and flat when there's a massive crowd. And he's misjudged it here. The ball seems to be going away from him, but he keeps his eyes on the ball all the time. And that's made the difference. He stuck out that right hand just in the nick of time. And an important breakthrough for India. Oh, Ponting's got one away. So he's off the uh, mark with a four as well. 
Yeah, he's just getting back to that catch. I, I just wonder whether it swerved a little on him. It definitely looked as if he was going to his left. And then the ball, it seemed, swerved a bit and he had to take it on his right. Either that or he just misjudged it. But watch this. He's going one way there to his left and then he ends up having to catch it and ends up catching it in one hand. In fact, in two fingers. But firmly struck by Hayden. He's done well there. Slight error in judgment, but the important thing was he kept his eyes on the ball. Yes, there, uh, there are defining moments in matches. One was when he was given out. This may well be another one. This uh, does tell the story. He goes away to his left there and ends up catching it in his right hand. And up she goes. I think he was very relieved. strike for Srinath in India here. The width was there, the length was there too for the drive. Ponting a little late on the shot. Gets the outside edge. Bhaiya makes no mistake. And India picked up another wicket. Srinath is second of the over. 74 for two. In the air. Oh! And into the gap. Well, they've had a little bit of luck. There's no doubt about that, but if you really chance your arm and hit it hard very often you get away with it yes a loose delivery to start off from her bhajan not often you see him starting off with a delivery that's short and wide Gilchrist has pounced onto it just for a moment he must have had his heart in his mouth when he saw it going up in the air luckily for him it was in the gap oh he's beaten the outside edge dropped by the keeper Daya. Yes, just to give you some idea of the comparison here, look at this. The Australians have really charged India. However, expect that little uh, yellow curve to just uh, start to dip now. Yes, I think that uh, what you can expect to see, uh, you can expect to see it to come back to the fold now. Uh, especially if they get another wicket. If you lose a couple of wickets, then uh, all of a sudden things tend to slow down oh, he's got that away fine for four so that's already eight runs off the over it's amazing Gilchrist and Hayden the way they they've got things moving out there is just quite incredible this is why it's so dangerous, Adam Gilchrist. Even, if, even though he's beaten a couple of times in an over, he'll still uh, be always on the lookout to put the bad ball away. The pressure is always on the bowler, knowing that he has very little margin for error. There's two men allowed outside the circle. Well, that's what bowled. Back for the second. And it's very good through here. Off the hip. And another boundary. So the Australians really hurting the Indians with the amount of boundaries that have been scored today already. 14 boundaries. A bit of good fortune for Saurav Ganguly. That first uh, wicket. Looked as though he... Uh, he might have been struggling to pick it up against the background. Was going to his left. Either that or the ball was curving a little bit. Finished up really just uh, stuck in one hand. Again, it's ripped away. Square leg is... Uh, will he get to it? No, he won't. In fact, the man has been moved around to just behind square legs and the boundaries continue to flow. So Gilchrist brings up his 50. 
in just his third in the just the 13th over so a very fine innings from adam gilchrist there's some good australian supporters who have been following the team right throughout the tour we didn't see much of the strike early on adam gilchrist so these runs have really come with a rush in the air and a no fine legs the final leg is up catching so gilchrist is up happy to just to wander around with the ball and hit it in the air over fine legs so the hundred up for australia in the 15th over well this has been a nightmare for our Goka. seven deliveries have cost him 21 most of them from boundaries hit by adam gilchrist wasn't uh, wasn't a great line when you consider that fine leg is up he's got to be full and at the stumps at the moment Good running by Evan. Brilliant piece of running. Hot conditions. Took the fields went on and got it easily. The Australians must be uh, pretty happy about the situation at the moment because there's a bit of help there in the pitch. And I think with that sort of help there, they really should be trying to force the Australians to be more aggressive. Flat to a long on. So the Indian captain does it well. Oh! Oh! And a feel because it must have hit the pad first. Gilchrist wants the side screen fixed and put together. So no problems here for the umpire to make that decision. We have a gap in the side screen. Well, Habashan did get. Uh Gilchrist in the test like that, hitting the pad first. On that occasion, it was well outside the line of off. And Gilchrist tries for the sweep. Now, he may have got a little bottom edge on that as it goes away towards the boundary. Have to wait the umpire's decision as to whether they are three runs or three leg buys. It's the latter. Gilchrist having a quiet chat to the umpire saying, I think you might have robbed me of three runs, up. Did Gilchrist get a bottom edge? Look like it there, although well, Gilchrist's re reaction. There will be a bit of spin for him. There's a bit of taping on his uh, little finger on the right hand. So just talking to the batsman and finding out whether it's okay and Michael Bevan doesn't seem to mind that's good running he makes it look easy Michael Bevan when it comes to running between the wickets so quick on that first run the moment he played it he knew there were at least two in it look how quickly he start the other end and in the end a comfortable stroll for the moment, uh, the Australians picking up uh, easy singles. Make it a couple. 134 for two. Again, excellent running. There's no one at mid-wicket. The fielders on the boundary on the onside are too deep. That gives Bevan the opportunity of picking up the twos. The ball hasn't gone outside the 30-yard circle. The keeper giving chase, but two comfortable runs. His ball, Dembia. Tendulkar has struck. And such an important wicket. Gilchrist going back to cut, giving himself room. The ball has gone and hit the stumps, and Australia have lost their third wicket. This could be an important breakthrough. And could also be the turning point. Wicket number 99 for Sachin Tendulkar. Around the wicket is a line that Gilchrist is never comfortable against. This one, the straight through, which found its mark. But a good innings of 76 by Gilchrist, 142. It's just to give you some idea of the strength of the Australian batting lineup. Uh, Lehman to come in next. 
then Simons, both of whom are, are considered to be recognized batsmen, and then uh, Harvey, an all-rounder, and then the bowlers. So there's still a bit of batting to come. Oh, and uh, that one patted away there by Steve Waugh, turned back out of the rough. And Tendulkar getting the odd uh, delivery just to, to rear up a little bit. He's uh, troubling Stephen Waugh. This, this could be a very significant spell. Yes, and he's only into his fifth over, which is a good sign for India. India would assume, and I guess Australia as well, that if one of these two men is there at the end, Australia would win. So India must be thinking that to win, they have to get both these men out. They can't afford one to be there towards the end of the innings. Oh, he's gone for the cut shot. Tendulkar is worrying Stephen Waugh. A little bit of lack of bounce threw it out wide and it turned i think tendulk is quite happy to be bowling his off spinners a little bit quicker that time that time he did get bat on the ball just uh, watch a little puff of dust as this ball hits the turf see the dust uh, flying there as this pitch starts to break up That's a good shot. Just a little wide from Tendulka. Once again, back for the second. Obviously inviting uh, Stephen Ward to cut, hoping that uh, a little bit of inconsistent bounce and the spin may just uh, result in an edge to the keeper. Oh, he's had a go at that one, and, uh, well, he gets away with it. Steve War uh, trying to pick this one up from just outside off stump. Very lucky there. That uh, deflected back onto his leg and then just past the keeper there towards slip. So um, that could quite easily have deflected onto the stumps. Uvraj. And then just after that, Tendulka uh, started to have a little bit of a glare at him. There was a little bit going on there and. Uh, just a little between uh, Tendulkar and War, and uh, Steve War was making one or two little gestures towards uh, quite what that means. Christy Tendulkar getting stuck in himself out there. He doesn't take too many backward steps either. This is what uh, War was doing. Well, Steve War starts most of it, so I don't think he can complain too much. So it's a battle royale out there at the moment. Exactly what you would expect in uh, what has become a final with the series locked at two all. Two world-class players at each other. Tenduka with the ball in his hand. Steve Wall with the bat in his hand. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, it's uh, it's the guy that loses his head and then loses his wicket or bowls a long off. That's the one that uh, should cease from this sort of thing. That's a nice uh, shot by Bevan. A little bit short there. Steered away beautifully for four. That really is a lovely shot. If you if you bowl, it's short outside off stump, spinning in. Lovely shot, beautifully played. Just watch this. You can play it because there is no slip in place. No point in the fieldsman and the bowler complaining about the lack of slip. Bevan knew that. Oh, he's gone over the top there. That's very well played by Michael Bevan, and that was a short delivery. So Yuvraj, is, what is happening to him here is once and over, he's bowling a short ball. And uh, if you're going to do that to these two players, then... Unfortunately, from India's point of view, they're going to take the four they require every over. And Bevan can do that very well. He knew where the fieldsman was. He doesn't hit the ball in the air very often, but when he does, he knows exactly where the fieldsmen are. again Bevan putting the pressure on the fielder in the deep that's the problem the Indians have had the fielders in the deep have been right on the boundary line and when you have someone like Bevan out there in the center there's always a chance of two being taken well the throw went to uh, Steve War's end which was the right way to go but it wasn't a good throw Again, very good placement. This is good, sensible batting by Michael Bevan.
very good uh, Yorker there from Zahir Khan. He excels at this delivery. But Michael Bevan was able to get the bat down very quickly. Zahir Khan realising he's got to get the breakthrough. That's what he's been brought back to do. And just a hint of swing there for him. That should encourage him. Coming back into the left-hander. He's gone for the big one here. And Agarkar coming underneath it. The catch is taken. Sachin Tendulkar has got the Australian captain. 100 wickets in one-day internationals. And this match still not over. Well, they had a bit of a confrontation earlier on in the innings, and uh, Tendulkar has had the final word in the battle. And this is how Tendulkar got him. Trying to drag that one from a long way outside off stump. It may not have turned. Might have been the one that goes straight on. Hence it hit out near the end of the bat, near the toe of the bat. And uh, Agurka always had it under control. Michael Bevan really hasn't done much in this innings in the way of uh, lavish stroke making. I think it's time that uh, Ganguly made him start to think about having to do a bit more than rather just push ones and twos. There's two fours for Bevan. Yes, it could be three pretty important overs if he can get a chance to uh, have a crack at the lower lower part of the order Harbhajan he could still do a bit of damage in three overs we've already seen uh, Ian Harvey struggle against his bowling Michael Bevan bringing up his 50 so India ideally would like to get a wicket in this Tendulkar's last over in the air taken He's got the wicket. Yugrat Singh, the catcher. Third wicket for Tendulkar. And Australia have lost their fifth. Well, that was a pretty good catch by Yugrat Singh. The ball was hit hard, but it was hit to uh, Yugrat's left hand. And he was having to move at full stretch to take the to take the catch on the run that's a very good catch Lehman will be disappointed that he didn't do more with that it's 195 for five and that's gone through we'll have to wait for the umpire signal here no signal from the umpire Well, what Andrew Simons tends to do against the off spinners is get towards the offside. On that occasion, he's, uh, he's played the sweep and got it right between the keeper's legs. But he does like to get towards the off stump and play on the onside. But he does it off the back foot, which is quite sensible. So I think Ganguly's got to get uh, perhaps one more up into the circle, probably on the onside, and try and get Simons to hit over the top. Again, he's got that fine. He'll look for two and get it easily. Could probably even get mid-off up in the ring. Try and tempt him to hit over the top, try and get a line outside the off stump. It doesn't take much to get Andrew Simons looking to hit over the top. That's what he loves to do. 200 coming up with that uh, two runs to Simons. So I think that's what India have got to do. Try and force him to hit over the top. 
early in his innings before he's really adjusted to the conditions. He's a very powerful striker of the ball, Andrew Simons. When he hits it, it normally stays hit. And Andrew Simons has holed out into the deep. Going down the track, there was just one man in the outfield on the offside. He's found him. Badani, the catcher. Srinath striking with his first delivery of a new spell. And Australia have lost their sixth wicket. Well, a change of ball uh, probably made that one carry a little further. Maybe that's why Andrew Simons thought he'd go over the top with the harder ball. But it just swung a little bit, just enough to catch out near the outside edge of the bat. And an easy catch there for Badani. It's 202 for six. Not even close. Not even close. Well, he got away with the wide, Harubhajan Singh. The Indians going for a loud appeal. And uh, Michael Bevan is baffled, and rightly so. That was wide. But everybody under pressure now, including the umpires. They're getting close. Tendulkar, three for 35 with his off spinners. Could be a run out here. <laughs> no. Boy, Bevan wanted the second one, and uh, it would have been close. It would have, mind you, it would have needed the direct hit, and it's unlikely Bevan would have been run out. He's so fast. You look at him go. He wanted to. Harvey knows what he's about. Back he comes, then says no, and I think it was sensible. And eventually, the uh, throw was held back. So, trying to put pressure on the fielders, one. Number two, making sure they don't lose another wicket too soon now. They really want to have a few in hand when they get a little bit closer to the target. 205 they've got. 61 to win at 6.3 and over. Bevan going beautifully. A lot of talking going on. Michael Bevan just had a word with Harvey. Harbhajan Singh getting a few field adjustments going. Yuvraj Singh moves to point. And Srinath, who was at point, moves to cover. Every run counts. That's runs. That's beaten everything. Probably just a little flick of the pad there as it uh, went down the leg side. Habajan Singh thought it was very close to the leg stump or perhaps even to LBW. Mind you, the Indians are appealing for absolutely everything. It was an overspin delivery. And uh, just a little glance of the pad there. Good job, too, because it was very close to the leg stump. Trying to play the sweep to a full-length delivery. That's dangerous. In the air, down the ground. Bevan will want to. Back he comes, comfortably home. This is the only way he can play. Ian Harvey he likes to hit through the line. It's not the right kind of pitch to play those shots. Hitting it in the air. And Harubhajan Singh really has a chance of picking up this batsman. Bit too short that time. That's nicely played. Beautifully played into the gap. He'll get two easily. The twos are really valuable. O'Bevan keeping his head. With Harvey out there in the middle, one would have expected the off-spinner to bowl at this stage. Maybe he's kept Harbhajan one over as his last lethal weapon in the closing stages. This will be close if he hits. Oh, he's hit, he's hit. He's got to ask the question. This will be close. This will be close. I think, mind you, it's Bevan. He's ever so fast. And normally with Bevan, he surprises everyone by getting home. What do you think, Sanjay? Direct hit. So you never know with direct hits. He's the quickest runner between the wickets in the world. And the ball hits the stump and the bat is behind the foot of uh, Ajit Agarka. For a moment, I thought it was in the air. I think it's firmly grounded. He's not out. He is incredible. He is so fast. Great throw. Anyone else, uh, I reckon, would have been struggling there. Look at this throw. 
really let it go. He was a long way out when the throw was coming in. Back down, short of the crease. Youngsters, watch this. Over the line it goes. That is magnificent running. Well, it could have had the TV umpire fooled for a while because the bat was hidden behind the foot of Ajit Agarka. And just for a moment, I thought the bat was in the air. But as you could see from that second replay, that he was nice and clear. Yes, I think you were hoping, Sanjay. <laughs> oh, he's hit that one away down to square leg. It's a short deliver delivery, which has been magnificently played away. And that single shot brings everything back to square again. 41 runs to win or 41 balls. Been a long time since the last boundary. 84 balls. Michael Bevan has been really taking it a lot easy now. But this one, quite short and uh, was looking to come down the pitch realized it was very short pulled that away down to the boundary this could be four that's a very good shot again short delivery that time beautifully played away by harvey that's 11 runs off that over a great over for australia oh that's a magnificent shot it's going way into the stands that's a real big six Michael Bevan deciding that he's going to have a go at Habajan Singh. And, well, that 11 runs off the over of Javagal Srinath might have been the first nail in the coffin. I think that six may be the second. It took a bit of a risk, uh, dragging this one from outside the off stump. But he hit it well. There is a bit of spin in the pitch, but the man is well set. Wide outside off stump. That one's cut away for another single. So 20 runs to get off 27 deliveries. This is a great shot. It's dragged from outside the off stump against the spin and looking to hit in the air at all times. That went a fair distance. Was it ever a great shot? Oof. A Bevan to 74. 20 of 27 four wickets in hand it's an indoor um, Harvey had all sorts of problems with uh, Habajan he bowled that uh, overspin ball from over the wicket got that one away fine running away down towards the boundary Bevan will want three here no he won't Settles for two. Got rid of the ball quickly, Ajit Agarkar. Oh, and uh, that one just nipped back a little bit. The slow delivery, well left. When we came this morning to the stadium, there was a bit of concern about the pitch. And of course, this venue has never been a high scoring one. 229, the highest score before today's game. Good slow delivery by Agarkar. But then India got 265. And the Australians seemed like uh, they will reach that score but this man has uh, this match it's been exceptional right so it's um, it's just a question of uh, get picking up the singles now and uh, steering ball through the gaps I suppose the main thing they don't have to go and do anything silly 14 to win of 22 deliveries what a what a performance this has been it really has been an outstanding performance by the Australians it's been very very hot here in Goa hot and very humid another single and once again having a go at Bevan down the other end they won't get him <laughs> that's for sure he's just too quick but they're making sure that he doesn't relax too much and uh, in this heat, they're getting him to really sprint the singles. Yuvrat Singh again, looking for a direct hit. And getting uh, Michael Bevan to really stretch and work hard for every run. Go off to get 20 balls to go. Bevan looking up. Harvey was on his way. Good running by Harvey. He really has uh, worked well with Bevan today. He, he, did, he didn't rip too good with the ball turning. But Habajan Singh had lots of overs. One of the problems I think that India have had here is that they've lacked one spinner. They played the extra quick bowler. An extra spinner made, made a difference.
good to see the Indians still working hard. They've not given up. And again, an Australian batsman had to really stretch for another run. Been a good approach by the Indians in the closing stages. The match running away from them. They are fighting it out out there. Straight down the ground. Magnificent shot from Harvey. Boy, he's starting to uh, warm to this task as well. A lovely straight drive for four. It's the end of the over. It's 2.59 for six. When it's as hot as it is here, and you've already fielded, charged around in the field for 50 overs, you really need, uh, I think I mentioned before, you need to be pretty fit, but uh, you've got to be mentally good too. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Bevan is such a magnificent player when it comes to chasing a total. Started by scoring seven of 25 balls, setting himself up for just this. Straight down the ground for four. He's absolutely smashed that. It would be appropriate, actually, if Michael Bevan hit the winning runs here. The scores are level now. One run to get to win, 14 balls to do it. And uh, Michael Bevan, well, you can take a bow. This has been a superb performance. Tony, you talked about two nails in the coffin. I think this is the final one. India is done with this uh, clobber by Michael Bevan. That's it. It's all over. Bevan has hit that one over the top of cover. A magnificent performance, Michael Bevan. And congratulations to this Australian team chasing a big score here in Goa. Have uh, come back in fantastic form, in fantastic form, really. Michael Bevan, such a hero in situations like this. The Australians win by four wickets and they win the Pepsi Cup 2001 3 2. And uh, have a look at the Indians. They're all coming over to Michael Bevan and giving him a pat on the back. And the Australians, they're uh, a pretty happy bunch. Uh, they, they copped it in the Test Series, but uh, they've come out here in the one day has come from behind and uh, taken out this tournament. As far as the Indians are concerned, they've lost the one-day series, but I'm sure they've made their supporters very proud with the way they've played. They won the Test Series, and that was most entertaining to watch, and uh, one-day cricket had to live up to the expectations that the Test Series generated. And we've seen an enthralling one-day series as well. So everybody out there applauding, standing up to applaud these players who provided us with some excellent cricket over the last few weeks. Michael Bevan, the hero for today. Ian Harvey, give good company. And a jubilant Australian camp with a captain out there right in the front. Australia chasing 266 for victory. Did it with four wickets in hand and two overs to spare. Primarily thanks to Michael Bevan, regarded by Steve Waugh as the world's best one-day player. He finished not out on 87 of just 113 balls. Adam Gilchrist and Matthew Hayden got Australia away to a very good start. Ricky Ponting continued his poor tour and Steve Waugh slogged 17. But Ian Harvey, perhaps one of his most important innings for Australia, gave plenty of the strike back to Michael Bevan in the tight last overs. So Australia winning by four wickets with two overs to spare. For India, three wickets apiece to Srinath and Sachin Tendulkar. And gee, you can't keep Tendulkar out of the match. It's either runs or it's wickets. But not much else for the Indians, and that's why Australia was able to get the 5.62 runs per over to win the match. Time now to go to the presentation. Ravi Shastri is there. I'd first like to ask Saurav Ganguly to come up, please. Well, Saurav, bad luck, 267, a good score. You had your chances. Oh, I thought it was a good score, but I still at the end of the 50th over, I thought we were 20 runs short. We were 218 for, one, for two in, uh, in the 48th, and I thought we played a little badly in the last 10. We lost the game in the last 10 and the first 15. I thought we bowled too short. Too many boundaries in those first 15 overs when you were bowling? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, that's been their strength, cut and pull, and we just kept on feeding them. We've got to learn from it. But when you got three wickets in a hurry in the middle of the, uh, in the, middle of the innings, Australian innings, you must have fancied your chances then. Yeah, obviously, you know, we, need, we, knew, we knew we had to pick wickets to win this game. We, we picked up three wickets, we got back into the game. But then they changed the ball and got a very hard, more or less a semi-new ball. I think that just took the game away from us. What was the pitch like for today's game? Well, it stopped a bit in the first 10 overs, but then it became better after that. It, it was a pitch which was stopping. I thought we should have bowled better. Tough cricket in the last two months. You won the Test Series. Uh, you've lost the uh, one-day series, a close one. Uh, what are the positives to have come out for India from uh, the last two months? 
Oh, we've played very well right throughout the series. I congratulate my boys for the way they fought back every game, the test series and the one days. We, we were playing a good side who, in, uh, who have been winning games in, in the past when they came to India. And I'm very happy with the way we played, especially Lakshman, Harbhajan, Sachin, Rahul, all of us. And I thank them all for the way they've played, the way they fought this series. John, Andrew, Mr. Chetan, Chauhan. I thought it was a great team effort. Uh, we said that we didn't win the one day series, but we go with a lot of positives from this, from this test and one day series. Played a lot of cricket in the last few months. Looking forward to the rest? Yeah, absolutely. It'll be good two months off. Uh, we will get some time to think about Zimbabwe because that's what my aim is to win a series abroad. I think we have the side uh, to do that. If we get a bit disciplined and work hard on the game, I don't, I don't think that would be impossible. Well, good luck for the future, Saurav. Thanks, Rory. Thank Saurav Ganguly, the captain of the Indian team. Now the Pepsi trophy and Steve Waugh, if he can come up, please, and collect the Pepsi Cup from the Honorable Chief Minister of Goa. The Pepsi Cup from Mr. Manohar Parika, who will present the Pepsi Cup to the winning captain, Steve Waugh. Australia winning the series 3-2. Well, Steve, many congratulations. Tough match. Uh, your boys came good under pressure. Yeah, it's a very pleasing result. We, we played really well today. The wicket wasn't easy and um, some spectacular batting from Michael Bevan at the end got us through. Proved why he's the best one-day batsman in the world. 267 uh, was never going to be easy because the ball was stopping on the batsman. It was turning as well. Yeah, it was a difficult wicket. We probably thought about 250 was uh, pretty much a pass score. So we, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a really good chase to get 267 on that wicket against uh, you know, some spin bowlers. So it, um, it was a really gutsy performance. First 15 overs crucial, the way uh, Gilchrist and Hayden, the start they got you off to? Yeah, they got us off to a great start and probably without that we would have struggled to get the run. So uh, the opening partnership was crucial, the way they went about it and uh, scored quickly and probably relieved the pressure a little bit for the middle order. Two months in India, you happy with the way things have gone? You lost the test series but you came back uh, well in the one day series but a good education for some of the youngsters on this trip. Good education for everyone. Uh, look, look, we gave it our best shot. I'm uh, very pleased with our commitment and our... Um, you know, intensity and we gave 100% every game. We weren't quite good enough in the tests and um, I'm very pleased the way we come back in the one days because it would have been easy to sort of uh, you know, get down about things 2-1 down. To win 3-2 is, is a very good performance. Thoughts for the future? You've got the Ashes Tour coming up. Look, we're looking for five or six weeks rest to start with but um, the Ashes series is um, you know, it's a great series for any Australian player to be a part of but um, we've learned a lot of things here from the subcontinent and hopefully when we come back next time or the players that come back, we can win a test series here. Happy with the facilities and the, the crowds that have turned up for the test matches as well as the one-day games? Look, I think everything's been outstanding. You know, the, the facilities have been great. Uh, the wickets have been uh, you know, challenging, but I think they've been very good overall. Uh, and the people have welcomed us here, so we've had a great tour. Thank you. Well done, Steve, today, and good luck for the future. Thank you. Steve Waugh, the captain of the Australian team. Well, now next to me is the gentleman who will be the educator for the man of the match and the man of the series. First, the man of the match, Kemi Smith, your choice and the reasons for it. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate Australia on winning this well-contested Pepsi series. Uh, today's game was a real thriller. For India, Ganguly came good. He got a well-played 74. And again, um, he got 100. Um, what's his name? VVS Lakshman. VVS Lakshman again. He, he played very well for this 100. But for Australia, uh, they were off the good start and Gilchrist he played well to 76 but then towards the end Bevin he ran like a hare he played a truly match winning effort Michael Bevin man of the match Michael Bevin the man of the match in today's game outstanding effort that has helped Australia to a four wicket win and uh, Michael if you can go up to the stage and collect the Pepsi man of the match uh, trophy that will be given by Mr. Ramesh Menon and there's also a check for 35,000 rupees, which will be given by Mr. Shannon Gomes. So 35,000 rupees and the Pepsi Man of the Match trophy. Well, Michael, well done. Uh, they call you the Terminator, and you delivered for Australia today. Uh, yeah, I did my best. I was lucky when I came in that uh, Gillian Haydos gave me a good start, so uh, it was quite slow, the pitch, so it gave me a bit of time to sort of work out what shots I could play and uh, how to pace the innings. The fact that you'd got off to a great start and the required run rate was always under six, that must have helped. Yeah, that was, that was a big help and uh, that's generally the way it goes over here. You score sort of most of your runs in the first 15 overs when the ball's hard and the, you know, the outfield's quick. So. There was a period for about 15 or 16 overs when you didn't get a boundary, Australia didn't get a boundary. What was going through your mind at that stage? 
I, I just tried to keep it at six or under, and as soon as it got under, to uh, you know, above six, then you know, we could make a move. And the grounds over here are quite small, so if you do need to sort of take the spinners on and try and go over the top, it, there is a chance you can do that, I suppose. The situation was tight when Ian Harvey came out to the centre. What did you tell him? Oh, Harves is a really good stroke maker, so I just tried to tell him to be here at the end, and if he's here at the end, we'll, we'll, we'll get the runs that we need. You just came out here for the one-day series. Uh, you've enjoyed that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I enjoy playing for Australia full stop, and uh, I enjoy being part of a winning team. Well done, Michael, and good luck for the future. Thanks, Ray. Michael Bevan, the man of the match in today's game. So he gets the Pepsi trophy and a check for 35,000 rupees. And now the big award, the man of the series. And Cammy Smith, once again, is the adjudicator. Cammy, your choice. Yes, uh, this was not a series for bowlers. Just one bowler got 10 wickets, but he was expensive. That was McGrath. So it's the batsman who came into line for this man of the series. There were three contenders, Tendulkar, BBS Lutchman, and Hayden. But Hayden, who only played four innings, he scored the highest in the series, 310. Hayden, man of the series. Yes, he's had a fantastic tour of India. Matthew Hayden, man of the series. And he'll collect the Pepsi man of the series trophy. From Mr. Dan and Narvika. And a check of 50,000 rupees as well. Mr. Ravi Jaipuria will uh, handle the trophy to him and a check of 50,000 rupees. And some, more, some more money there for you, Matt. <laughs> well, well, well done, fantastic tour of India, over a thousand runs. And uh, did you expect it uh, to go the way it did? Yeah, it was really an amazing tour, Rav. Um, I think full credit goes to the Indian supporters. I think every game has been packed to the rafters and it makes our job so much easier and so much better when you've got such a magnificent supporters we've been shown right the way through India. Must be enjoyable batting with Adam Gilchrist at the top of the order in a one-day game. Absolutely, he's a dynamic player and he's always sort of looking to score runs quickly so it's, it does make your job very easy, yes. Now, when you started the tour, you didn't get too many runs in the, uh, in the first class games before the Test Series, but then uh, you really came good in the Test matches. What do you think was the turning point? I think, um, obviously, just the situations of the games demanded that someone sort of get, get a big score. And I think mainly I just started really enjoying the tour. I started relaxing into the Indian experience. And I guess for an Australian coming over here, it's a very different cultural experience. And once you start relaxing and enjoying the um, opportunities that you're given, I think that was the key. It was great on your part. You were not in the original one-day side, but because of your effort in the Test Series, uh, you were included and you've justified the selectors. Yeah, I think, Ravi, it's just been a dream come true. You know, two weeks ago, I was on a plane home. Um, at that stage, I probably wouldn't have argued, but um, you know, it was a great opportunity um, to get the opportunity, obviously, to play for one-day cricket for Australia again. It's just um, something that I've been looking forward to for a long time, and to be part of a winning series now as well um, makes it that much more worthwhile. So plenty of fond memories to take back in these uh, last two months. Look, I think it's just been an amazing time. Um, you know, I've personally learned a lot from this trip. Um, the people have been outstanding the whole way through in the hotels and every venue that we've been at. Um, we've, we've enjoyed the success and we've enjoyed the, the, the disappointments as well. And I guess that's what cricket's all about, really, when you get in a situation where you know, a great side is humbled here by you know, a really, really tight Indian outfit as well. Well, Matt, well done. Have a good career and thanks for the entertainment. Thanks, Ravi. Thank you. Matthew Hayden, man of the series, a fantastic tour of India, over a thousand runs in test matches and one day international.